Hi. Hello. Salutations. Welcome to my video. My name is Grace and today I'm going to be showing you how I made my chemise and drawers to wear under the 1860s ball gown I'm going to be making. Now I'm sure you're wondering. Why are you making an 1860s ball gown? I'm just a person who's very enthusiastic about historical sewing and historical fashion. Why can't you just make the ball gown and not make the undergarments for it? Well, if you were to wear historical dress without historical undergarments, it really wouldn't look correct. The silhouette would be very off. Before I make the actual ball gown, I have like a whole lot of work to do. I need to make the chemise, drawers, corset, petticoat, crinoline cage, another petticoat, and then the ball gown. Oh, and a corset cover. I always forget about the corset cover. What are you even going to do with an 1860s ball gown? Wear it to junior prom and flex on the haters. Now before we get into the making of the chemise and drawers, let's discuss the history behind the garments. What is a chemise? A chemise is an undergarment worn to protect the clothing from sweat and body oils. The chemise evolved from the shift, a staple of Western fashion popularized in the Middle Ages. It is a simple linen smock and the layer worn closest to the skin, meaning it is washed more frequently than other historical garments. The chemise is a term popularized around the early 19th century when the garment in question became more complex in terms of patterns and trimmings. It is also made out of cotton instead of linen. Until the Regency era, there was no additional layer besides the chemise that went directly against the skin. That is to say, there is no underwear as we know it today. This may sound like really weird, but women wore layers of petticoats for modesty and warmth, so it wasn't all that strange to them. Drawers were adapted for men's underwear and began to be worn around the early 19th century. Drawers were open-legged, meaning the crotch seam wasn't done up. open leg drawers were essentially two legs attached to a waistband and tied around the waist. Before we get started making the thing, I just want to say this is not a tutorial. Well, I have like no idea what I'm doing. I haven't been sewing very long, for like maybe less than a year now. I've only made two really historical projects. This 1880s bustle dress and this ulster coat that was only kind of historically and was adapted for everyday wear. I also made this little women's suffrage cockade for it. I made it using Bernadette Banner's tutorial. I'll link it in the description. Go check out her channel. It's really cool. For this project, I used the ladies' Victorian underwear pattern from Laughing Moon Mercantile. The date ranges from 1840 to 1900, which is such a broad date range that it makes it questionable in terms of historical accuracy, but Laughing Moon Mercantile usually has pretty good patterns. Also, it was cheapest because it came with a chemise, drawers, and corset all in one instead of buying separate patterns. I started by marking out the pattern pieces onto some white cotton muslin using orange tailor's chalk and cutting them out using kitty scissors, because I didn't feel like getting my fabric scissors. Also, please excuse the mess in the background of the first clip. I'm still working on the whole keeping your workspace clean thing. Yeah, it's kind of a disaster. <laughs> I chose a size that was pretty big on me because I wanted to, it to fit loosely. And also, I wanted it to be off the shoulder because that's how the dress is going to be. After that, I pressed each piece so that they would lay flat when I was sewing and it would be a little easier to work with. So I have the front and back yoke pieces for the chemise. This will be the neckline, and these will be the armholes over there. And then all I need to do is stitch here and stay stitch along the neckline and other curved edges to keep them from like warping and stretching. Then I did exactly that.
I've pinned some lace trim half an inch away from the edge of the neckline and since the seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch when I sew it um, I'm gonna sew along here and it will encase the raw edges as well as the top of the lace and it will fold over and just show the lace here I have the lace pinned on and the other piece on top, so now I'm just going to sew along the shoulder seams and the neckline, and then turn it right side out and show you what it looks like. The yoke of the chemise is done. I put it on the mannequin after turning it right side out. I still need to iron it, but you can kind of visualize what it'll look like. There will be buttons here, and then the chemise will fall down from the bottom edge. By the way, that thing took forever to turn right side out. You basically had to fit the whole thing through this part, and it was awful. This is the top of the chemise. And I need to stay stitched along here and then just gather the whole top of the thing. And a satisfying dough. Once I had the gathering threads in place, I pulled them so that it would gather up and fit correctly on the yoke. Once the piece was all gathered, I pinned it in place on the yoke. I opted to hand sew the front of the chemise to the yoke so I could go downstairs and watch TV with my family. Now the chemise has a front. I still need to add buttons here and buttonholes and obviously a back for it. That would be great, but it has a front now. This is the back of the chemise and I need to gather from here all the way over to there so it'll fit in the back of the yoke. Did you guys catch the rogue silly band on my floor? I remember when those were a thing. What a wild time. Oh yeah, back to sewing. There I am putting the gathering threads in place. Then once again I pulled the gathering threads, this time on the back of the chemise, to fit it in the back yoke. Once I had it gathered, I pinned it in place. After that, I sewed it on, by machine this time. At this point, I had like a weird chemise with no sleeves or sides. I pinned some lace trim to the bottom edge of the thing so that when I fold it over like this, only a little bit shows, and then I'll fell this part so that no raw edges show. Once I had the lace sewn on, I ironed it down so it was easier to fold over the raw edge and fell. I also pinking sheared the raw edges on the inside of the chemise, and here's the finished edge of the bottom. Now it's time to make the pin tucks at the bottom of the chemise. So I have the lines marked out. I'm going to fold it like halfway in between and then fold over, iron that down, pin it, and then sew it, and it'll create a nice pattern of like straight lines of folds in the fabric. 
I then proceeded to fold and pin all of the tucks. So uneven. <sighs> Once I had the tucks sewn, I ironed them down. So the chemise is almost done. Um, you can see the tucks and everything down here. They look pretty okay. I want to add sleeves to the top, so puffed sleeves, so I'm going to do that now. I need to add buttonholes and buttons here. It is time for the sleeves. So I will sew along this edge and this edge and then gather it. Yeah. When I was sewing in the gathering threads, the fabric kept bunching up, so you can see me trying to pull it out and keep it from, like, pre-gathering. If anyone knows how to fix that, let me know. So I s gathered one of the sleeves and put it on my head, and it looks like a pretty cool hat. Pioneer lady here to steal yo man. Now I got to fold it over and sew along this thing. It looks kind of like a diaper. <laughs> Hold up, before I do that, I forgot, I need to put on the sleeve band so it has a nice, like, thing. I don't know. Like this little thing. See that there? You gotta have that. Can't, can't not have that. Also, I need to add lace. So, like, this part. It's 10.30 p.m. and I usually go to bed by 9 because I don't do anything. And now I'm tired. Mm. I'm attaching the lace in the same manner that I had previously where you put it face up and then when you fold it over it looks all nice and stuff. Yay. We go into bed. Good night. For the record, I didn't do this all in one night. I just, that's the only time I thought you should know I was going to bed. Sleeve! Yay! Then I had to add buttons. Like right there. And those are the buttons I was using. I did the buttonholes by machine because they're easier and neater to do. I should probably practice doing buttonholes by hand, but I didn't this time. There are the finished buttonholes. Now it's time for the drawers. The pieces for the drawers are essentially just large wonky hexagons that get folded over. Like that. And then I just sew along here. And it creates a leg thing. I speak so eloquently, don't I? just have two gargantuan pant legs. I left the bottom of the seam open because I should put lace in it, but I don't have any lace right now, so I'll get that in a minute. Now I pinned one of the tucks and I'm gonna sew over it and then do the rest. Oh yeah, and I pinking sheared the edges. Snippy snippy. Alrighty, the pin tucks are done. They look pretty rough over here. They're not going down properly, but I don't feel like doing anything about it, so I guess I'll just move on. Now it was time to sew on the waistband, but before I did that, I fell down the edges of the pant legs. Here's the waistband piece. It'll fold over and make a point at center front. And what I need to do is iron down the top edge and the sides with the 5 8 inch allowance. Now I need to gather the top edge of the pant leg. There I am putting in the gathering threads. And gathering the pant legs. I 
I've added lace to the bottom of the drawers, so I just need to turn and fell the um, hem and the rest of the lace at the bottom. Once I finished the bottom of the pant legs and putting on the waistband, I threaded some cotton cord through a channel I made in the top of the waistband to create a drawstring. After a wash and a very poor ironing job that got re-crinkled a few minutes later, the chemise and drawers were done. Fun historical fact, the chemise can be worn over or tucked into the drawers. Both are historically correct. Thank you guys so much for watching, it means a lot. Feel free to leave a like or a comment if you have any questions. Also let me know how I can improve. I know the volume wasn't great in this video and I could have talked a little louder, but besides that, if you would, wouldn't mind sharing some feedback, that would be great. Thank you! Haha, <laughs> I just made a video in my underwear. Scandal.